Hey, folks, welcome back. This is our very first episode right here on Tools of the Trade with Mike and Leroy. So, uh, man, I am pumped. I've been excited all day getting this thing going. We've got a lot of things in the works, and I hope y'all stick around because I hope it's going to be a great show. Go ahead, Leroy. What's going on, guys? I hope everybody's doing good today. We're going to talk some tools. My man Mike knows a lot of stuff. He's making me know a lot of stuff, and uh, I'm just super, super excited. Um, everybody knows I sell tools, but I want to explain to you what I know about the tools to help everybody learn. So when you guys go out there and pick, you're a little bit more knowledgeable, and you don't, you're not passing up stuff that you can make money on. Yeah, he's got some things that you're actually going to see live right here on the show. We've got some screen shares that we're going to share with you all that's been recently sold on eBay. We're going to also even talk, discuss some other topics. Myself, we're going to talk about pocket knives. Case double X, to be matter of fact, I'm hopefully going to teach you all uh, the, the dating, how to read the dates on the tank stamps, and what those numbers mean on the back of the blades. We're going to look into that a little bit later here in this episode. So, uh, Leroy, I believe you had something you wanted to show right there real quick. Oh, I mean, I, I have, you know, I have some tools. Um, You want to just do an introduction on, you know, who we Absolutely. are? And, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's uh, recognize we got Art Vandalay in here with us. That is awesome. Thanks, Art, for uh, coming in here and joining us. Can Man Adventures is here with us. Right here is a big supporter of my channel, Red Dirt Picker. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate you. Oh, man, we got the man himself, Tommy Bernard here with us uh tracy's with us oh look at here she's ready let's go let's <laughs> go baby hyphy Joe's here with us we got nine people in here with us I, I, and i said if we can get 10 to 15 people on our very first episode we're going to fly high and get big but uh leroy you introduce yourself yeah i am uh leroy blood um i am born and raised in rhode island new england and um i uh now live in um south carolina um i've been i've been a I was a landscaper for a long time. Um, I did building maintenance for a long time. I was started reselling when I was like around 19, um, going to swap meets. And then I started selling on eBay when you had to mail stuff in um, and always been selling on the side, um, even though I've had full-time jobs. Um, really enjoy it. I feel like I've learned a lot um, and I still have a lot of room to grow in um, selling tools. But that's something, you know, real in a, in a nutshell, that's pretty much who I am. How many years do you have in with the tool marketing side of it? How many years have you been selling? I've been selling tools on eBay probably since I was about 22, 23. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm 46 now. I've been selling at swap meets since I was at uh, auto swap meets, guys. So auto swap meet, we'll get into that Um but auto swap meets, I've been selling um, at them probably around the same time. Awesome. Yeah. All right. I'll introduce myself. My name is Mike, as known as East Kentucky Picker. I'm located here in Eastern Kentucky, a little small town of Sandy Hook. If you're uh, familiar with that, that's the hometown of Keith Whitley, the former country music legend. Uh, I've been on eBay off and on for probably about 10, 12 years, but I've really settled down and hit full time uh first of 2020 i uh, i have a standard flea market booth that i've been set up there for 26 years uh so uh sell all kinds of miscellaneous items on my ebay you know i sell a lot of things when it comes to music cds to uh uh video games i've been getting into a lot of clothing here lately trying to open up my market now i'm going to expand my business this year so we wanted to do this show just to open up everybody's eyes in areas that you might go to yard sales and walk by specifically like me. I, if I would have seen a table full of tools there, I'd walk by them because I had no knowledge in them at all. But with uh, what I've learned from uh, Leroy has helped me and knowing what to look for. And we're hoping to bring this information into you all as well. So uh, back in the chats real quick, guys, um, I see a bunch more people that have, that have coming in. Um, thank you guys so much. Um, and anytime, if you guys have anything to chime in with what we're saying, or if you know something that we're saying a little bit wrong, 
this community is is about learning and teaching each other. So please put something in the chat if if I say something wrong or if Mike says something wrong, just just jump in, you know, and and let us know if you know something a little bit different than what I'm explaining or what Mike's explaining. Yeah, if you, if y'all have any questions or comments, drop them off to the side there, and we'll get to them. Uh, we're gonna. We're always going to try to change this show up. Please bear with us because this is our very first show period, and it's a learning curve for us. We do have a, a, some some things in the future that we're going to bring in that's going to probably be pretty more exciting. But this is kind of what we just rolled up with now that we're going to build off of and try to get better in the future. Uh, 1987 Ventures is here with us, and he says they say this is one area that I don't know much about, so looking to learn more about the tools. Uh, we got Paul here with a flipping sports guy. Leroy, I told you if it's tool time, I need your best Tim Allen grunt. So give, give us that grunt, Leroy. I don't know the Tim Allen grunt. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and anybody who knows me, I don't really watch TV. I'm, yeah. I'm, I've, been work, I've been working and grinding my whole life. Um, when it comes to TV, my, my favorite movie, I'm still at coming to America, which was in the eighties. Yeah. Can you believe we got 18 people in here with us? I'm I'm just trying to read the chat. I'm I'm trying not to look at that because it's amazing, but I want you guys to stay. So please input all that stuff. We're 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 totally gonna try to make this. And if you guys know anybody, tell them, you know, because we all pass stuff up at flea markets and yard sales and re relatives' houses that we don't that we don't know much about it, so we just walk by it. I go to flea market three times a week and there's stuff that I walk by and I'm like, I know I'm letting a table full of money go by, but that's not my thing. Yeah. We uh, also, not only tools and knives we're going to discuss, I have went and, I, and I'm sure it's going to be okay with them. I've pulled up about three or four different items that other YouTubers that I follow and I spy on be, I uh, be honest with you. No, I'm just kidding. But, uh, that they've had recently sold it. And I want to talk about them and explain the reason why my thoughts of reason why they sold. And uh, maybe it, it would be something eye opening to you all to not walk by as well. So we're going to add some bolos to the, to this show to, to keep an eye on. And in future episodes, I do want to announce in future episodes, once we get done with our section, we would like to bring in guest speakers as well. Later on in, uh, here in a few shows. So if, if that's something that you're interested in doing and would love to be a guest speaker on our show right here on tools of the trade, make sure you send me a Instagram message or Leroy a message. That way we can book you in on our shows. And we're going to do these every Thursday evening at 6 30 PM Eastern standard time. So we do have a couple of questions in the chat, Mike. Okay. Um, relating tools, um, I see somebody asked me about snap-on tools. It's funny you say that because Mike and I were going to um, discuss a little bit more about some of the snap-on stuff. Um, that's almost a whole category or a half of segment by itself. But you know, we'll always jump into any of your questions. Um, just to answer that quick, yeah, snap-on is definitely a tool that you want to look out for. It's definitely a money-making tool. Um, you also have Mac. You also have Maco. Um, those are also tools, and and we'll get into them. I'll, I'll bring some up and show you different things. Um, there's also dating on those, like with Craftsman. Or, and I know tonight Mike's going to get into some dating with the knives. So we will definitely get into that stuff as well. Farm Girl Scavenger, thank you, Nicole, for coming in. I really appreciate it. So we're going to run through here and and discuss some things real quick. Are you ready for the first uh, share screen of the die set? Yes, sir. Or do you? All right. Okay, guys. So um, today I went to a flea market, and I'll show you when we're done with this share screen. Um, and I, I picked up a, a die set. Mine is a little bit older. Mine is not in here. Um, a die set is something that 
a lot of trades used to, to make new threads on a piece of steel or an old bolt. Um, a lot of stuff like that. They use die sets. There's different sizes. They have like little teeth on them. Um, some of them have a lot of pieces. And like Mike's showing you, there's, um, you know, complete sets. There's also a lot of times when I find these sets, I'll find some of them that are missing pieces. Um, what I personally do when I get these sets is I split them up. So, Mike, if you can go into any one of the bigger ones and just blow it up so I can um, sort of dissect it a little bit. Okay. Let me find a good picture here. What about this one right here? Hey, Jennifer, thank you for coming in. So, guys, so that we have the case and then three black handles. Um, what I normally do is I will sell those. There's actually four there. I will sell those separately. So I'll take those and I'll list them for about $20 a piece, $25 a piece. So on the top right there, I'm already looking at $80 on that set. If you look down, there's to the to the left-hand side, um, there's, there's a couple rows of four. I would take those four and I would sell them for probably another $20. And then the next four, another $20. I do tend to sell my stuff a little cheaper. So you might see that the prices for those are a lot more. Um, myself, I like to sell them a little bit cheaper. So, and then you go to the bigger ones. I would do those with a little bit more of a price. If you look to the left, all the way to the left, you have the um, the the taps. The taps we're looking at, and then the dies are the long ones. They actually just look look like drills. Those there, there's some missing. There's always missing or broken in a lot of these sets, unless you're buying them brand new. So that's why I myself I like to piece them out. So I do not see any questions in the chat yet about this particular item. If anybody has seen those and passed them up, um, please let me know. Um, you know, and, and if you need any more ex explaining about those, Mike, if you could go, if you could go to the vintage ones and then we'll go, we'll jump into that and then you can, we'll look at those quick and then you can jump off screen and then I can come on. Okay. Okay, so uh, down, down, go back up a little bit, please. With the one with the wooden box. Okay, right there. Yep, go to that this one. one top? Yes, please. Okay, so this one here, guys, it's it's it actually looks like it's a double set. It looks like there's two, but this this set right here, I mean, it's in really nice shape. It's in really nice shape. I don't have the page. I can't see the numbers on the page, but that is, um, that set right there is, okay, so it tells you, all, it gives you all the model numbers and everything like that. Again, this is not mine. This is just something that we're pulling up to just give you guys an idea. If you want to jump to my screen now, Michael. Okay. So here's one of my handles. So this, this here, I've actually never seen um, one like this before. It actually has three different pieces. And these small pieces, they insert into, actually four of them, but they insert into the, the handle. And then you can, you, you know, you can use whatever. They're all marked craftsman on them. And I'll show you that in a second. So I believe you guys can see that there craftsmen so they are mocked craftsmen um to be honest with you the ones that i have here they're a little they're a little chewed up um it'd be really hard to see but i really think you guys can see that i see it yeah we can see that yeah if you look at it how bad it's chewed up um so you know by me sewing in pieces i can sort of eliminate that where you know nobody is complaining oh they're chewed up or anything like that um on these bigger ones, you can see the teeth are a lot better. So this is what you want to see when you're going around and you're looking at this kind of stuff. You want to make sure that the teeth, 
they they look like teeth. They don't look like um some of my neighbors down here in the south. No, just kidding. <laughs> they don't look <laughs> they don't look like they're missing, you know, teeth and they're all scraped up. Um, but they're coming to that, there is still value in this. And you would say, Oh, well, how is there still value in that? There's other things in in, in, that people do with this kind of stuff. I met a guy and he always picks me when he sees me. He makes metal art. So he'll make, you know, you'll, you'll go somewhere and you'll see somebody will make a, a dinosaur or an alligator or um, a rose petal or a saddle. I've seen so many different kinds of um, art for, um, for, you know, out of tools and stuff. Now this one here, that I showed you, if you think about it, if somebody was doing art, that wouldn't that be awesome for like teeth for like a fish's mouth? Or there's a lot of other areas you guys would think of. Those are those are things that you can still sell. You can put a different name in your listing and you can just say, hey, listen, they don't, they don't, they're not, they need to be sharpened or repaired, but they'd be good for um for someone that does you know metal art. Um, it's real metal. It's not the stuff that you're getting now when you go to Harbor Freight. This piece of metal is, is a real piece of steel. Um, and this is the stuff that they chase after. Um, a lot of those kind of guys. Um, this one here, the whole center is worn out. And that shows it really good there. And I'll show you one that. Where did you pick this setup at, Leroy? Uh, I picked this up at a, at a flea market and I bought it for twenty dollars. Okay. And like I said, I'm looking at um, when I put these together. Uh, there's uh, four of the big ones. I'll put those together. I'll put them on probably for like fifteen, twenty bucks. A lot of people don't have time to piece stuff out. I enjoy doing it, so that makes me find time to do it. Gotcha. So I'm into this kind of stuff. So for me to sell something and piece it out, I, I'm 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 excited to do it because I'm putting that product that could go in the landfill, I'm putting it back out so everybody so everybody can, you know, use it or fix their set. Um, somebody's grandfather might have this set. And now by me selling a couple of pieces that were missing, it it just warms their heart a little bit and makes it makes the set complete. You know, and, you know, you guys, a lot of people on eBay that sell like us, they, I got to slow down. <laughs> they will, um, they will buy off of eBay parts that they don't have for an item that they're selling. Um, I heard that earlier today, somebody was selling, they were selling something and they couldn't find a pot for it. And they went on eBay to complete it. Um, cords, any of that stuff, um, they'll take it and they'll go. They'll, they'll go and, you know, and put it back on eBay. Mike, I think I am all set for now, and then we'll get into the box itself. Okay. Noelle mentioned here that she had used those at the Freightliner when uh, she built trucks in the 2000s. She uh, had a ton of specialty sets. Well, still have them in my rollaway. Uh, Leroy, if those are true craftsmen, they should be able to be replaced by craftsmen for free. She says, okay. Uh, oops. Piecing out is the best profit strategy. Eric says. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad that that was some fast shipping. You're good. You're welcome. Keith. He had purchased some of those wall hair clippers. That I've been moving off my top shelf. Nice. Uh, nice. Yeah. So we'll let you settle down there and I'm going to bring up another screen here. You know, Switch over to the case real quick. Okay. We'll we'll discuss that real quick. Uh, before I share the screen on that, Case Double X is probably one of the most popular USA made knives in in pocket knife history in reality. Because uh, if you go to yard sales or if you go to flea markets or such, majority of the time when if you got a bunch of pocket knives, you're going to have a customer say, "You got any ca uh, Case Double Xs?" and uh, you know, I wanted to talk about this subject because this is a subject that's close to my heart because I've this is something that I've learned over the childhood. And 
as a reseller, you know, this is items that we see all the time, most usually at yard sales or estate sales, especially uh, you'll see this stuff. But, you know, the question is, they don't know how to date them. They don't know what the numbers mean on the back of the blades. So hopefully that with this episode, with this show right here, we'll be able to put a little knowledge into you. So next time you do see a case double X, you know exactly what you're looking for. So with that being said, I do have a, a screen here that I want to share with you all right here. This is your tang stamps that you would normally see on the front of the blade of the main blade when you open it. This, this one right here is, is the first tang stamp that was ever, I wouldn't say first tang stamp. This is the first time that they used the, uh, the dot system. And it was in, in, that was in 1970. Well, what they did here, they put Case Double X USA. Then they would put 10 dots down here underneath it. Then after, in 1970, there would be 10 dots. And every year after that, they would subtract a dot. So in 1979, that means that there would be only one dot left right here. So in, when 1980 rolled around, they used this, they, they switched it up a little bit and they made this S in case and USA, they call that a lightning bolt. So that's your first instinct to know that that's a 1980 tang stamp. And they took the dots and put them in between the two words. And the same thing that 1980 would have 10 dots. And let's say 1987 would only have three dots for an example. So when 1990 rolled around, they actually stamped the dates on the blades from 1990 to 19, mid of 1993. There's not a specific date of 90, when, it, when it happened, but it's safe to say somewhere around the mid, like July, August uh, era there. They found out the reason why they switched is when they went to that date system, the sales of those knives plummeted. The, the 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 value of the knives took a dramatic hit just because that and they wasn't producing a lot of pretty knives and it was all yellow handles black handles and such like that it wasn't nothing too extravagant and they and they looked into that information and they made a switch from mid of 1993 to 1999 they added this long tail c in the word case it's got that they call that a long tail c but they left the lightning bolts in the s as well and then they issued the dot system when the mid-century turned around there and we got into the 2000 era they they was like oh man we've got to do something that's different what are we going to do then they issued these dots and x's so in 2000 it would start with a dot and end with an x exact same period they would take one away for each year so as you can read right here from 2001 through 2005, one dot is removed for each year. From 2006 to th through 2009, an X is removed each year. When 2010 rolled around, they just flip-flopped it. They put the X's first, then the dots, then they removed them the exact same way. So now we're into 2020. What did they do? They put the case double X, and they now they got dots at the top and bottom and they will remove one of them each year so let me uh stop sharing this screen let me see if there's any questions i mean you can't get no better than tools and knives can you really i hope i didn't go through that too fast and uh yeah miss jennifer hayes is correct hit that thumbs up we'd greatly appreciate it what happens if it has no dots, no X's, just says case? That you're talking about an earlier case that'd be 1920 to 1940. Okay. That's before the dot system came in effect. And I, I'll show you, I'll show you that here in a little bit. And this chart, um, where did you find this chart where other um other people can look it up on their phone? Where did you find that chart? Uh case double X dot com. So case nine. Yeah, uh, it's okay. actually SHCC means Shepherd Hills Cutlery, Case Cutlery. 
this is from a they're out of missouri and they this is just a library i'll i can sh drop a link and share it with you all or yeah. after after the show we'll we'll look into uh i'll add it to a description and stuff yeah a lot of people should um a lot of people should look out for um different mockings and stuff like that on knives and tools um it it adds to your description it show it gives the uh the, a lot of the, a lot of people collect this kind of stuff, guys. Um, a lot of people use it, but also a lot of people collect this stuff. So there is there is people that they're serious. Like they could put me to shame on a little bit of stuff that I'm saying. I sell them. I don't collect them. So um, they're gonna ask questions. Um, is there a little mock like this? This that I have. I'm not switching over the mics, but um, the stuff that I have, there's no date on it. Like Mike just said. So that means it's a certain era when there's no date and there's no model numbers. So these are all things, guys, that you can go, you can go on uh, Google and just type in how to find um, a, a time, you know, what, when was it made? How do I find out when a certain craftsman or a certain case knife um, item was made? And you can very easily pull it up. And that's always something good to help you guys. Absolutely. Um, me, I'm jumping back in. Uh, uh, Justin, it'd probably be better just send me a picture of it and I can help you out because uh, it just varies on conditions that that way. Uh, what versions of the case double knives are the most sought after? Your Whitler's Congress is your two most sought after patterns. You, there's a sunfish and an elephant toe. Those are very sought after as well. Uh, but like I said, case double X knives is always a big thing to uh, look at. And I mentioned that there, you got numbers on the back of it as well. So let's look into that a little bit. I pulled up this identification. So if you've got a pocket knife, if you even got one handy, open up your main tang blade blade of that case double X, you'll see numbers on the back of it. Those number, each one of those numbers means something. So that first number that you're looking at, for like we're going to use six for an example that six represents that handle material that's on that particular pocket knife so if you go up to this guide right here it tells you that that is a jigged bone or it could be jigged synthetic or a jigged laminate and the easy easiest way to take and know that the difference between a jigged bone and jigged synthetic is by taking the knife and holding it like so this is the best way that i've ever found out if you take the knife and hold it like so and push real hard and slide your fingers like this if it slides real easy it's plastic if it has some resistance that's a good way to tell that it's bone so that's a good way to to uh know the difference you can also use your teeth rub it against your teeth if it's got if it's smooth and and it's real slick then it's synthetic if it's kind of got a little sandpaper or abrasion to it it's a good way to tell it's that it's uh bone as well so can i do that with the tools yeah try it see what see what happens oh no, no i can't oh. do that with tools oh i bet you it would probably slide until you get to the grip part a 6207 yeah. that means it's a, a bone handled with two blades and that's a mini trapper the 07 means it's a mini trapper. So let's look into this a little bit more. The second number tells you exactly how many blades is in that knife. Why is that number important? Because a lot of people, and there's a lot of people out there that will take blades and switch them. They might take a blade out or they might add an extra blade to it. So if you got that main tank stamp there and it says three, that tells you that there has to be at least three blades into that. The rest of the numbers here tells you is your pattern number. Uh, 47 is your standard stockman, by the way. And here's a list of your handle materials. And like I said, I'll share this page in a little bit. As soon as I get done sharing this screen, I'll share it with you all so you all can look at it. Like, if, let's say this was 1347. It would be a solid hardwood handle. A 2 is a smooth black synthetic thermoplastic rubber, which is like a the smaller, cheaper, uh, it's like it's got uh, line X material on it, basically, is the easiest way for me to put it. 
smooth yellow synthetic is that's your common that a lot of our grandpas and great grandpas had back in the day was that yellow handled knife that I'm sure a lot of people's familiar with. That now, number would that be a a, bone or was that a plastic? It's plastic. It's plastic. Okay. It is plastic. Uh, this is one of the more sought after knives is your genuine stag, which is a number five. Uh, genuine stag and a jigged bone is your most, one of the two more popular patterns besides your genuine mother of pearl, which is a number eight. And this is the reason why it's so important. Uh, there is so much good imitation mm -hmm. mother of pearl and they, and that's a number nine. So if, if you've got a knife and you think it's mother of pearl and it has an eight, then it most likely it is a mother of pearl. And again, you can take it and rub against your teeth. And if it's really sandy paper against your teeth, it is mother of pearl. If it's imitation, it's going to be smooth and slick. And, and guys, you know, some of this might be just over your head. Um, some of what he's saying is over my head. Some things that I say is over his head. Um, you know, if you have to go replay it another time when you're packing or stuff like that, this is what, why we decided to do this kind of show. So there are going to be times in these segments that you guys are just lost. And, you know, just bear with us because we, we feel that we really need to explain to people the certain things that we sell and how to make it easier and better for you guys to find them and not give up money that's literally sitting on the table. So was my know, screen sharing whenever I was explaining that date codes and I mean the uh, yeah you were on my end. Um, okay, because I just flipped over to Streamyard and I it looked like it wasn't. So I was just, in the chat, guys. Can did you guys see when he was sharing the uh, codes and stuff like that? Doesn't did anybody see that? Because it kind of freaked me out because I, I jump I, I can't see nothing because I'm sharing my whole screen so I can't see no chat or, or what's going on. Yeah. So I, when I jump back to StreamYard, I'm like I'm looking at us and I'm like, oh crap! I just said a bunch of stuff and nobody even seen nothing. I saw it. Um, one person says they didn't see it. Um, Jennifer, did you see it? I seen it. Okay, East East Tennessee Flipper said he seen it. Okay. Yeah, this, this is what I was looking at right here. Please bear with us. This is our very first show. So, but this is what I was talking about. You know, your first number is your handle material. Your second number means how many blades is in that knife. The remaining numbers is your pattern number of that particular knife. And there's different numbers for different patterns. And we'll look into that at a later date as well. But no. but again. You got all these numbers here that represent your handles. But the key ones to always remember to look out for, for the big money is the number five, which is genuine stag six for the jigged bone and number eight for the genuine mother of pearl. Those are the ones that you'll see more, most common of a lot of things. This stuff here, you do not see very much of because it's not, they don't produce it that much, but it's out there. Trust me, it's out there. Yep. But and a lot of people think it's worth a lot of money and it is, but it's really based on the pattern. Yeah. And I see Nicole has, uh, she said in the chat, her very first knife was um, a yellow, a yellow handle case knife. That is the anybody most else, common. Anybody else have any stories like, um, their first knife or the first tool that they saw. Guys, throw that in the chat. Like, we want to try, try to make this where you guys are interacting with us as well. Yeah, I mean, if there's any questions, feel free to pop them up here for us. And if you have if you have a particular knife and you got questions, shoot me a message on uh, over on Instagram. Send me the picture and send me, uh, you know, and I'll try to help you out. And we'll we'll look into it and get a, try to, to determine a value for you. But, uh then we'll look right real quick. We ain't going to spend a whole lot of time. I just want to show you all uh, what I'm speaking of here. What we're looking at here, this is the most recent knives that just recently sold on eBay. Okay. We're looking at a 1972. This is 6347 Stockman. And most likely it's probably used. And this is something that you're probably going to see at at, at a, a state sale. It's not used, but it's not very well taken care of. I'll, I'll put it that way. Because if you look at this picture right here, do you, I'll, I'll hopefully y'all can see my mouse. 
But if you look, you can see that there's some pitting right here on this bottom of this tang of this second blade. There's some right here at the uh, mid of that thumbnail opening. And look at these. These are scratches that's created over time when this blade is opened. It's either rubbing against the inside bolster or it's rubbing against this blade. So most, you know, if you, if you would look at this knife on the other side, most likely you're going to see some scratches that's going to rele relevant to that those right there. Um, Noelle said Tommy is a, I might have said a name wrong. I'm sorry. She said Tommy is a tool. Yeah. I mean, even if a, an old beat up electrician's case double X knife that you might not think is worth a penny or uh, not worth very much. I mean, take a look at this. This thing, it's, they bought it for its intended uses, and that was to use. It's, this thing's been sharpened. It's been, it's probably been jacked around. It's probably touched a lot of electrical components, trying to see if get some arc, make sure there's some live wires run from it. But look, it still brought 1950 as a old wooden knife. Yep. And those, and this is stuff that you'll find in the bag lots. You know, that you, at estate sales and flea markets, if you see a bag of knives laying on the table. Take a, take a minute and sort through them, sift through them real quick and make sure that there's not this particular brand in there. Yep. Lobster, thank you for coming in. Mad Shed, thank you for coming in. Eric, thank you for coming in. I thank and all you guys. There are 30 people in the chat. I don't know where you guys came from, um, but <laughs> thank you. Look at the potential. This is going from the highest stand. Look, take a look at these knives. And you always talk, you was asking about what popular patterns. And you heard me say Whittler. This is a 6380. This is also known as a carpenter's Whittler. Uh, if you, if your grandpa's or your dad's back in the day would sit with a piece of wood on his lap, this is probably their go-to knife to whittle that stick down with because it fit really good in their hands and stuff. And that's the reason why it's called a Whittler as well. But I mean, this is the potential you're going to see from a lot of these knives. And this My is your, go so, ahead. There's a question. Well, somebody had said in the chat, his name is Eric, and he was talking about a bad sharpening job. And I just wanted to bring that to you. Yeah, attention. that that was on that uh, electrician's knife. That was a very bad sharpening. That was somebody that just wasn't experienced, and they took it and hit it on a rock a few times, thought they was going to sharpen it. But they actually hurt the knife worse than what it was worth. But if you see a bad sharpening jo job on a knife and it's only a dollar or two, don't get rid of it. Keep it, right, Mike? Absolutely, absolutely. But we're talking about case knives because there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of different brands. But we're we'll are we discuss that later today. Yeah, yep. Imitations and... Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, right, I'm just scrolling through here. Just scrolling through here so you all can see just the various type of knives. Cheetahs are very popular, which is this knife right here. That's a cheetah. And uh, they ask about the case double X. This is 1940 to 64. This is what the 1964 to uh, 1940 to 64 tang stamped look like right here. And, and I did pick a very bad knife to, to because of the, this is called a swing guard. You see those two pieces of metal that's going uh, the opposite direction of the blade. That is called a swing guard. And case double X did make a version where they didn't place that on there. That's just a, when you open that knife up completely, that is to guard your fingers in case they slip, they won't go up the blade. Okay. okay. But it, you can see case double X right there, just faintly in behind that swing guard. And that's your 1940 to 64 tank stamp. So there we go. That, that, that's awesome. Um, I didn't know that about the, uh, the swing guard on that. Um, and now, Mike, if you go into where your knives are, if you go down to, um, if you could pull that page back up, okay. Um, can you go? Can you go to the uh, the you are up towards the highest amount that they were getting? Can you go to the lowest? And I was just curious if there's pots and what the pots were selling for. Okay, yeah, we can do that. And again, guys, if if we're boring you, um, there are going to be times where you're not going to understand. Um, we're we're here for entertainment, but we're here to teach you guys. We really, as are. you see right here, this is some vintage 
paper that was used whenever they boxed the, the knives up in a, in a box. Back in the day in 1970s, they used what they call a pumpkin box. And a pumpkin box is, is what it exactly means. It's, it's orange and black in color. They would stack sometimes six knives in that box. And that's what they sent off to the hardware stores and your case dealerships. At, and that's what, how you bought your knives. And all this is just a piece of paper from that 1970s era. And it sells for $5. And, the, and, the, and the, there's probably some boxes, right, Mike, that are just the empty boxes or worth? Yeah, the, the empty boxes themselves, like right here. Here's This is the pumpkin box I'm talking about right here. And, it, you know, that, that one sold for five ninety nine, right there. And this one here is, is in used condition. It's got tape on it and everything, and it still brought seven fifty plus shipping. And it's just a complete empty old box that's, you know, back in the day, most people just threw away. Yeah, guys, when you go to estate sales and yard sales, when they have the at the end of the, the, the sale, they have your uh, fill a bag. You see this stuff. This is the stuff that you'll see. You'll see a box with nothing in it, a watch box with nothing in it. And if you're getting it for fill a bag and like Mike showing you, if you can sell it for eight ninety eight ninety five, or I mean, you that might not be your thing. But I mean, it's easy free money. Take a look at this old vintage sheath that somebody just put up to list and this is stuff again you would just come by and you'll be like well there there's not no value that thing's wore out nobody's going to want that thing i mean look at that it's all floppy right there and it just looks and it's it's seen its better days it's been used for its intended purposes but yet if you look at it it's still sold for ten dollars plus I sell, I sell that kind of stuff um i actually look for it when yeah. I see not on your knives, but on on my end on tool side, sometimes um they're they're just uh, pockets for, um you know any kind of shears, or anything like that. I that's one of my key things for a dollar. I'm grabbing it. Yeah, I mean that that that's stuff that you can find in. If you find a bag of just used sheaths with some knives in it, you think there's no value there. I mean you can that's ten dollars just off that just used wore out sheath. That a lot of people that would be uh, that and people will even put multi tools, not even only a pocket knife in that sheath. They'll put their Gerber multi tools or the Leatherman tools inside that sheath. If it will fit, they'll put whatever. And it doesn't even have to be a case double X. What pe what's inside that pouch? It could be a, a China made knife. But everybody else, when they see it, they might think it's a, they're carrying a case double X. You never know. But they just carry it because their dad might have carried that back in the day or their grandpa had one. So that's the reason why they want one. Yep. Yep. But I'm going yeah. to let you take over and uh, okay. I'm going to zoom through these messages real quick and see what we come up with. Yeah. Okay. Um. So, so like we were into guys, we were into um, with, with Mike, we left off with empty. Uh, we've been through with me pots and pieces, how I pot stuff out. I'm still into I'm still into the same set um, with the die set, and I'm just gonna. It's a little bit big, guys, so bear with me for a second. Um, but the box alone, um, Craftsman Craftsman Metal Boxes, Mike. If you can look that up for me, really quick. Okay. Um, so, guys, this is the box that it came in. The top part is metal. Um, the tag, just this tag. I don't know if you can see it. I don't want to drop anything. Um, Mike, I I mean, I'll make it big real quick. I believe you guys can see that Craftsman tag pretty good. Looks like I'm aiming it right at my camera. Let's see. Okay. So just the tag on some of these is worth 10, 15 bucks. Um, you know, again, some of you guys might not take them apart, but this box, it's metal on the top, and it's wood, it's wooden on the bottom. Um, you open up, it's really dirty, but there are guys, like I said to you before, that collect a lot of, you know, this kind of stuff, and they're just looking for the box. So they'll buy this box for 15, 20 bucks um, to put the rest of their stuff in, or their box got dented. Um, a lot of these boxes... Where if you look at this, guys, this it actually looks really good um, the, uh, over the top of it because a lot of these boxes, 
they would throw stuff on them. They're so big, they put them on the bottom of their truck or van, and they would get all dented up. So this one here, I'm really excited because the top is in really nice shape, and that's that's a good selling point for the box itself. I was looking up on um, on YouTube, and I saw that um, I saw that there's guys that you know they used to be they used to be say auto body guys, and and they just can't do it anymore. They can't fix the old hot rod or whatever. So they'll redo boxes. They'll they'll take a lot of the the old boxes and they'll sand them down, take the hinges off, fix the hinges. I mean, it's crazy. I was watching it one night for hours. I don't know what was going on with my mind, but I was looking and looking and, you know, it's a small hobby that they can do. And then they, they restore it and, you know, they either sell it or put it up on their wall. So just keep an eye out on that kind of stuff. Um, I'm going to look in the chats myself. Uh, Justin, I do want to make a comment on this one. Uh, yeah, they those w did look pretty mint condition, but also remember, uh, you might come across an estate sale that somebody was a knife collector and uh, at one time, and they could have a roll of them knives stashed away and they're at this estate sale, or you could open up that bottom of that dresser that nobody else opened up and there could be a roll of knives in there. And, you know, if, it, if they are a knife collector, a lot of people uh, die hard and they will take care of their knives, oil them and treat them. And you never know. They're, it's just like every blind squirrel finds a nut once in a while. So, I mean, you never know whenever the time or opportunity you'll come across that knife might be in mint condition at, at that sale. And, you know, another thing is you'll go to these yard sales and stuff. People, all they're worried about is just the money. They don't know what they've got. Yep. They don't they don't understand the value because all that, you know, if some if a loved one passed away or something, all they know is they got a knife here and they don't know the value of it. They just want the money out of it so that they can spend it on products or items that they're interested in. So, you know, even though I did show you nice mint knives there, we you can always go into eBay and places, just type in case double X use knives. <laughs> And look up the value of them from the low end to the high end, and you'll give you detail. But just because I did show you some mint and good condition knives, just keep in mind you'll never you to, you might go to a yard sale or a state sale tomorrow or Saturday, and you'll be like, you know what, those knives are mint. But yeah, and if something's that good and it's selling for five six hundred dollars, like we were showing you guys, the pots are going to be worth sixty seventy dollars. So you know. That's in my eyes, that's still a good sale for something that I'm buying if you can get them pretty cheap. Again, if you all haven't already, I don't know if you have or not. 32 people in here. Thank you all so much for uh, being here with us on our very first uh, live show. Like I said, we're, this is just, it's a work in progress. We've got a lot of ideas. We're going to, we're going to improve on and we're always going to change subjects and stuff like that and always keep it new and different and fresh. And yeah. I did put an Instagram post out. If you all have any bolo items, that's not related for the topic that we're talking about. But if you sold this pocket watch for next amount of dollars and you want to bring it to people's attention, or you bought this retail arbitrage item and you want to bring it to people's attentions, make sure you send me an Instagram of the link and we can discuss it on the next show. And and there is somebody that was in the chat that asked, what year is this um, set that I have? To be honest with you, I don't know. Um, I'm, I, you know, I'd look it up if if I was interested. But normally, what I'll do is I'm in it for the quick flip. I want to help somebody else and somebody else get a good deal. So if I can turn this twenty into sixty, then I'm 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 okay with that. Um, of okay. course, I'm gonna look stuff up and don't want to let a thousand dollar item go. But, um, you know, if I can just do that quick flip, I'm definitely going to do that. Okay. Here we're looking at some vintage metal craftsman toolboxes. Yep. All right. Here's just an emblem that sold for $9.99. Yeah. The, I was explaining that uh, on, on another show. Um, absolutely. And, and, you know, if you go, even if you go further down, like if you go, I like to start from the bottom, start from the, the cheapest price. And you'll see just handles and stuff like that. You'll see it in the trash. Somebody, 
you know, some people don't have time. They don't have time to deal with that for fifteen dollars. But if it's free, yeah, right there's we, just here's just a handle of a tool, a vintage toolbox that brought fifteen nine nine. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And here's some other labels that sold for twenty one dollars. Yep. Yep. And here's just a, an old tray that came out of the top of the toolbox for twelve fifteen. Yep. Yep. So you know these are all these are all very good things that we we want to try to bring to you guys' attention. Um, and I you know again I don't want to bore any of you guys, but if you if you watch back later and you we need to know and we need to explain more about some of this stuff is what I feel. Um, you know, I'm going to be hundred percent honest with you guys. Somebody called out a different name or whatever on a show and they were like, Oh, this person knows tools. And I've been dealing with tools for so long. And I'm like, well, the only way that I can prove that I know more about tools is prove it. Like explain, explain what I know, not just, Oh, Leroy is the tool guy. So, you know, when Mike and I put our heads together, we we're like, you know what? We need to explain and try to and try to give a little bit of knowledge and teach ourselves because I learn every day. When this box here brought twenty nine ninety five plus fourteen ninety five shipping. Do you think that sticker right there increased the value any on that box? I don't know what the sticker. <laughs> is. Uh, I I just see that I thought it was funny. Oh, it was a, a woman, but that might yeah. but that might be a real um that might be. No, they just put that on there. But there are some boxes that, um, and that did, that brought it on there. They're going to realize it was just a copy print. But there are boxes, and that box looks like it could have been. Some of those boxes, like I said, guys, they're redone. So there are guys, auto body guys and stuff that will literally redo these boxes. Garbage Monster, I appreciate you. I'm on that road to 300. I think I'll be at 200 soon. Yeah, feel free. So if you're, not so only me, I also support uh, Leroy Blood uh, Sweat and Sales. Hey, uh, hey, Mo, uh, thank you for coming in at the end of the show. We appreciate it, buddy. You're you're the best. Yeah, right there, Miss Jennifer. She's always doing a great job. Right there's the link right there for Blood Sweat and Sale. Go over and show him some love. Smash that subscribe button. He doesn't post a whole lot of videos, but from what I understand, he's got some equipment that he that's coming in that he's going to start producing videos on. So. Yeah. Yeah, definitely guys. Definitely. Um, I mean, there's so much we can get in. Um, we're, you know, I'm not sure Mike, where you want to go with this. I would say, you know, do you want to just cut the hour? Um, uh, red, red dirt picker here mentioned uh, that small wrench that we, ha that I had you live on the other uh, last week that had the pliers on and the small on the other end that, Funny looking thing, a jig. Yeah, that. What? What would you call that for him for them to search or to list their item? So the the name of it and um, I gotta find. Actually, goodness gracious, I gotta find my loop, guys. Um, so the name on it is it's uh D I A M A L L O Y doily. Um, it says hand boy. And spell, then, that, spell that one more time. D I A M A L L O Y. And it's a H. It's a H sixteen. Um, I'll explain while you're looking it up because some people don't know what he's talking about. When we first um, started getting into talking about tools. I showed this. This is a like a multi-purpose. Um, it's pliers on one side. There's a flat-headed screwdriver on this end, and then there's an adjustable wrench on the other end. Um, it's it's really cool. It's actually one of the items that um, I really like to try to find. I don't find them often. Um, Mike, the number on that is DH16. Yes, that's what I've got it pulled up here for him. Okay. It, it, I figured if I pulled up and, and they actually seen the word dimaloy, that yeah. they would be able to, that would help them out a little bit. That's the reason why I asked yeah. for you to spell it again for him. Yeah. But 
like you mentioned the other day, these things uh, usually bring right around the fifty dollar range. Yeah, thirty, fifty dollars, and you know, you I you you're looking. This one was in a box, and it was just with a ton of other stuff, and it was just I could just see the corner of it, but I know what I'm looking for because I've been I've been looking for this for a long time, and um, you know that's what we're trying to do, guys, is just give you a little bit of knowledge so when you do see it in a box, you don't just push it aside. You say, hey, you know what? I learned that on the Mike and Leroy show. Um, and that's, you know, what we're really trying to accomplish here. And you can see there's one here that's brand new in the box. It brought a hundred dollars. Yeah. You can, you can see the importance of how valuable a box could be to an item. Yes. Yep. yep. So when you see those boxes, you buy that box. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. Even yeah. if the pliers are not even there, you want to purchase that box because there's value at there for that box as well. Yep. Does anybody else, um, I don't know if we're missing anything in the chats, guys. If, if we missed one of your questions, throw it back in the chat so one of us can catch it and sort of. Uh, yeah, because uh, I, I share a screen on my, uh, whenever you're all looking at the share screen, I do not see nothing on the on the YouTube side of it. So uh, in case we miss something, just feel free. Just throw it back in the chat. Um so Let's let's discuss a few of your sales. How about that? Okay. Um, well, in the last in the last week, um, I mean, again, I sell tools, guys, but I do sell some other stuff. Some stuff that I sell, I have no idea what it is. So, just so you guys know, if you ask me, I have no clue. I got it at a good deal, and I'm selling it. So, um, yeah, I was really excited um, this week. I woke up on Monday morning and I sold. Um, I sold a few items here. If you look at the one I sold for nine hundred and twenty-three dollars and forty-six cents, I got that from a bulk buy that I bought from one of my neighbors. Um, can you go back, um, Mike? Go back up to the nine hundred dollar item, please. Yeah, right there. Yeah, it's right here. So, yep. Yeah, if you go, you can yeah, click into that. So it is a, um, I, I can't see, I can see it, the whole page. I don't see it. Okay. Here it comes. Yep. Okay. There we go. There we go. So, yep. There you go. So I had all of it. Um, I had a bunch of stuff and I was going to separate cause some of those boxes are worth like $20, $15. But I was like, you know what? I, I didn't really want to get into it. Um, and I said, I'm just going to lot it all together. Um, I probably could have made a couple extra dollars on it, but I found somebody that was interested in the whole thing. And I really don't know much about this, guys. It is a printer for those, those, all those boxes. There's some kind of metal cards or some kind of cards. Um, some of you guys might know better than myself. Um, like I said, I bought a big, I bought a big, uh, a big lot. I mean, I spent some money, um, but that was one of the items, um, and I wasn't expecting to get a thousand out of it. When I when I put it in my head, I was like, I'll take three hundred for it. If I can get three hundred for it, you know, when I was doing the math, when I was buying the bulk buy. So um, if we can go over Mike to one of the tools, um, I get a little more excited about those. <laughs> mm -hmm. But that's. That's all the uh, stuff that I had sold with it that Mike's showing here. Um, and this is my page, guys. If you ever want to look, see what I have, it's um, if you look on the blood, sweat, cell, um, that's it'll come up. This right here was one of my cool finds um, that I Mike, Can you go back to the, the page with the price? Yeah. Thank you. So this here, guys, it's not here anymore. So Mike did bring up a good point. I should discuss it and talk about it before I forget. Um, so this is a bag, like we were explaining to you. This is a bag for for um, Klein Tools is a very good name you should look out for. This Klein Tool bag is a bag that's used for um, high wire, um, high electric uh, 
lineman, it's a lineman tool. So they might hang this off of something on one of the lines and they can put all their tools in it while they're working on the high voltage lines. Um, these, a lot of the tools you'll see for these will be the same color um, and they'll be all rubber coated. If you see those, those are very uh, valuable as well. So I picked this item up for um, $15. The guy wanted 20, I offered him 15 and he took it. I took it home, just wiped it down a little bit and um, put it on. It's only been on for about two weeks and it sold right away. I had a couple people try to lowball me. I knew what I had because when you get into a niche and you don't see stuff often, that means buy it. And that's how my mentality is buy it. Um, so that's that's what that that tool there. That was I was really excited about that tool. Probably more excited than the nine hundred dollar tool because it's the nine hundred dollar item because this is you know, sort of in my wheelhouse. I've never seen one like this. This 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 here, I've never seen one. So those are the things that sort of drive me a little. If you go in, Mike, to... I do want to... I, I have... I don't know if, if you all can see it, but I have this picture here pulled up of the bag, and you have a measuring tool that's showing the actual measurements in a photo. The reason why I stopped here on this particular photo is because if you have an item uh, that's people are always going to ask you what's the measurement of this item it's just as easy more people will look they more people looks at photos than they do actually looking at the description you can put all the measurements that you want in the description but if there's not a photo that physically shows that they're still going to ask you what the measurements of the item is because they didn't read the description so it's always important to, to take a few pictures of your item with the visual light uh, where it shows that they can physically see the measurements in a photo. Yeah. And, and some of them will get picked and they'll ask you like an exact measurement. That's just, you could tell, tell it's off a little bit on both sides. The, the view is not the best, but if somebody, you know, they can say, Oh, I didn't know it was, it was 26 inches. There's a tape measure right there. If you go to another item, Mike, um, okay. go to, it will be on that list. Um, trying to think. We went over the. There's one more smaller one. Once you go back, I'll tell you which one to pull up. Guys, again, thank you for bearing with us. Um, go, keep going down. Okay, go to the Starret. That that's another very good name. That's going to be a whole segment on itself. It's right there. A hundred and twenty-six dollars and forty-six cents. You're probably seeing a little lag. Yeah, I, I see a big lag, but that's okay. That's why I've been pausing. Okay, so this, guys, is a machinist tool, um, a dial indicator. Um, I purchased at my honey hole, um, and I, put, I purchased this for $35. Um, same day I got the bag, and it was literally two weeks ago. Um, I bought this for... Um, 35 bucks. I listed it at one 125. I wasn't moving on this because if you zoom in on it, it has everything. The only thing that is bad about this is the original box has a little bit of wear on it. So that's where, um, you know, I wasn't too happy with that, but you know, it, I wasn't selling it as new. Yeah, I mean, look at that thing. That thing is so cool. See the box? See how it has a little bit of wear on it, guys. Mike, is there a picture with the tape with a ruler on that one? There should be a. I do. Uh, I haven't one. got to it yet. Okay. Okay. I'm trying to slow roll these photos. Yeah. And I'm not seeing a tape measure on this particular. I'm surprised. Usually, guys, I do like he said. I usually, I usually use them in all of my pitches. Um, every one of the items I sell, probably ninety percent of them, there is a, a ruler at the last picture because then that identifies to me that I'm done with those pitches. Julian says, "Keep it going. One more item. More items." Well, at least somebody's enjoying the show. 
Yeah, yeah, we still got 26. Um, we will be doing this weekly, guys. So um, I'm getting winded. I never get winded. <laughs> I'm getting a little winded. Um, I want to take. I want to use this uh, listing right here for an example. This is just a vintage four-pound sledgehammer, the head of it only, with a broken-off axe handle, as you see right there inside of it. I mean, something that you wouldn't think that would be worth a dollar to a lot of people. Obviously, it's worth seventeen forty-six to somebody. And whose site is this? Who's yours? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys, I'm bragging. A little bragging, bragging. But uh, yeah. So, and if you scroll it over, you should see um. No, stay in there. You should see in the pictures. You should see there should be a tape measure with that one. If there's not, then I'm fired. All right, I, I backed out. Let me go back into it. Okay. Yep, got your tape measure there. Yeah, there's, there's, I have a, the tape measure, and on that one, I should have um, a picture of the uh, scale of what the weight is on it. Not seeing a scale okay, picture. So I didn't do it. Okay. But you failed, I, Leroy. I, I failed. Did, I did fail. I'm, I'm trying to sell something I didn't. Uh, so I enjoy, I enjoy it over the head. Or, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, um, and everyone who's just still here, um, it, this is, this is pretty crazy for the first show. So I really, I really appreciate it. We just wanted, we wanted to do a live show basically for everybody. Uh, but we wanted to try to stand out a little different versus like the nurse flipper and, uh, Angie and Bobby, they was live last night discussing stuff. We wanted to bring something a little different. We want to do a lot of these screen shares. We want to do a little. Yeah, not calling anybody out because. No, um, no. We want it, we, we just don't want to do the same repetitive stuff that everybody else does. Because yeah, I don't we're the new guys on the block. We're yeah. the new guys on the block. Those guys, I be, I mean, they've they've got a lot of time built into it. And they, they earn what they've got. But we want to just step away and add our touch to it. Yeah. And we felt like that this would be a good way to do it. That and, and and we still have 20 people in the chat, 25 people. Can you guys put a one in the chat if you guys think that um this is something that you continue watching? Rate us one to ten, one being poor and ten being good. Is this something that you would come back and watch every Thursday night? We'll do it that way. But while while they're doing that. I want to jump back on this screen here real quick for the purpose. Right there is some, right there is the date stamps. And I hope everybody can see them. If not, we'll try to make it a little bigger. And I, again, I can't see your all's comments, but I will boost that up just a little bit more. But uh, you can see the actual on this particular page here, the first listing here is 1905 to 1914. And you can see up here in the upper left-hand corner, that was the first official, that was a Tang stamp right there that they used. And, but I'm not saying that that's the, that's what they used during that era. If you look on down, there's different dates. I mean, different kind of Tang stamps. Ain't that case double X or case 25 cents. Don't that remind you of like an old Coke bottle stamp right there, pop bottle or something like that. That's just a unique stamp. I, I, like I said, I've been in knives for about 18 years and I might've come across these early 1900 knives once or twice, but not very often. And they do replicate these stamps a lot on fake knives, especially like the case 25 cent, 50 cents. You've got to be extremely careful and you've got to know your knives to be, to know if it's legit or not. But these more common stamps you're going to see is on this page on the right hand side where like case double X tested and uh, those stamps, those are tank stamps that you're really going to see more out in the wild versus the other tank stamps there. Yep. So uh, I'll get this link posted as well to yep. where you can, where you can find this particular page. Mike, I, just, you I wanted to share that real quick. How, how do you feel um, 
how do you feel about a little over an hour? Um, I feel that we gave some good information. I don't want to go and drag it on too much. Um, and then if somebody goes back and rewatches, I think, you know, if it's if we're not too long, they'll definitely go back and rewatch an hour and 15 minutes. Yeah, I, I do want to announce real quick. We are going to keep this on my channel for a few weeks uh, until Leroy gets a little bit more comfortable with using StreamYard and, and understanding, you know, how sharing the screens and stuff. He's just not that familiar with it right now. And he uh, he's, he wants to get his feet wet, dabbled in it real quick to to do that. But uh, let me – I do have a few bolos that I want to mention real quick that I pulled from other people that wa that support my channel. And I, I feel like that they would be okay with me doing it. And the first one here is going to be this bottle of cologne. It's in Scotta, poor homie. It's 4.2 ounces, brand new, still sealed. I believe Matt mentioned that he paid like $50 for this and it sold for $359 and 95 cents. Isn't that just awesome? So, I mean, you could bet these vintage yard sales or yard sales or even a discontinued outlet store, something like TJ Maxx or Marshall's or something and they get a fresh batch of cologne in, they could have that old dead stock. And you never know, they might have some of this on their shelf that you might want to pick up. But I did want to bring that bolo up right there. And also, I want to bring this bolo up right. I do want to speak about the reason why this one here is, before I bring it up, I want to... I, I've been in a lot of live chats this week and I, you know, a lot of people has been on my live chats. I've had several this week myself and I've seen this topic float around in all of these live chats. I just want to take a second and explain the reason why it brought this kind of money. And this is me speaking for myself. I can't speak for anybody else, but I'm going to speak for the reason the, that I personally think that it brought this much money. So, with that being said, it is this item right here from Cincinnati Picker. This was a, if y'all watched his videos, he, he bought a bunch of this old Nintendo school stuff from this older lady, and he purchased it, and he, uh, I think he, I think he said that he gave $300 for everything, because he thought that everything would be, from what he comped out, was seven to $800. So he did a, so he listed it instead of buy it now, he did an auction. And as you see right here, folks, this particular game brought $760.87. He had a lot, a lot of attention on it. it. It had 38 bids on this particular game. And this is just me speaking out loud. The reason why I personally think that it brought $760.87 is that whoever purchased this, they're going to be sending this game off to get graded because this thing is in pristine condition. I mean, you can see right here at the top of the label, it does have a little wear on the edge of that label right there. But other than that, the label has great color and everything. It's a five screw cartridge. You got one in each corner as well, one in the middle for a five screw cartridge cartridge and again i'm looking at it again that looks like it's a lot that's bouncing off there. i could be wrong because i look at this picture and i'm not seeing it as much so that might be a lot that's bouncing off at that i mentioned earlier but look at this box this box is like it's even still got the original hang tag that would still that the Kmart or Walmart or a video game store would use to hang it on the shelf. And it's not even been used. It's still down in its original place. And this box is in really good condition. Other than this lower corner, I can't move my mouth down there because it wants to bring up uh, all the pictures. If you look down in that lower right hand corner, it does have a little issue down in that corner. Right there, right there's a perfect picture. Other than that, that box is in great shape. This person is going to send this game off 
most likely to get graded by a grading company. And if this box would come back, I mean, if this game would come back in a better grade, a good grade, you're looking at, you know, a couple thousand dollars at least on this game. So that's the reason why this, I feel like that this game brought that much money is because they're going to send it off to get graded in hopes that it comes back a good grade and there's not very many of them out there and, and the value is just going to be like remarkable for it. Yeah. And guys, if we're not active in the chat, um, we're trying to do a little bit more teaching then. So, you know, we've said before, if we miss, if I miss you or if Mike misses you, um, you know, please excuse us for that and always hit, hit us up on, um, on Instagram and we'll definitely, um, try to answer a question or help you figure out how to get the answer for the question that you're looking for. Um, Mike, I don't normally do this, but um, I want to do a little plug if that's okay. I don't care. Okay. I have a morning show that I do with my buddy Mo. If you guys see him in the chat, it's resell on niche. Um, we're on um, Monday, Monday's Eastern time. We're on uh, between nine and 10 o'clock. Um, Mondays, we skip Tuesdays. We do Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Um, sometimes I'm not as calm as I am tonight, <laughs> but um, it's a really good show. We're starting to build some regulars. Um, we talk about a bunch of different things. We go through shipping. We show what we sold. So if anybody is is just shipping or if you're just driving the kids to work or I'm to school, you know, please, please try to uh, come out and support us. Um, thank yeah, you. I mean <clears> – <throat> If you see anybody in this chat, I mean, they're all, every one of you all are great YouTubers and the, each one of y'all provide very good content that everybody specializes in. Don't, and you know, I appreciate everybody that's subscribed to my channel and I'm sure Leroy feels the same, but go, go support everybody else. We're all, we're not, a, we're not competing against each other. We're all here trying to become a team to help everybody you know, all together in general. And I'm just trying to grow my channel. I'm just, you know, I've, I've, I'm new at this. I'm very new at this. And I've still got a lot of learning to do myself, but, and I enjoy it. And hopefully we, you know, our thing is just to, just to try to bring a little bit more knowledge to everybody. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Definitely. Definitely. Eric sounds like he looks from the chats. Eric has a lot of great NES products. So, yeah, I mean, we do have a lot of tricks up our sleeve. We're going to be working on this week. We're, we'll hopefully we'll get it. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, knocked on down a little bit. But I just want to scroll. I'm scrolling back up here. I want to see what everybody rates us. They just gave time, us tens. It was tens. Yeah, just in time gave us a ten there. Most yeah. most most of them gave us ten. You know, I really appreciate appreciate that, and. Uh, uh, and stuff. So just make sure that, you know, you tune in every Thursday night at six 30 Eastern standard time right here on my channel. Then eventually we're going to, I'm not going to be greedy and keep all the watch hours I'm, and we're going to share the love with uh, Leroy there whenever he gets more comfortable. Yeah. So I guess um, we'll, we'll try to, we'll try to wrap this up, Mike. Are you okay with that? If you're ready to go, it doesn't matter. I can, I can hang out. I've, I've been known to do nine hour shows. Yeah, I don't. I don't want. I want people. To be able, I mean, it's your channel, but I yeah. think if we can get people to go go back and watch, and some people that are not here, I mean, I'm hoping that tomorrow morning there's 80, 80 people that have watched so far, and yeah. I don't want to get out too far. Yeah, I mean, I, like I said, I've been known to do nine hour shows, so it, it doesn't matter to me what time we leave. I can hang around for everything, but it's been it's very, been very interesting and. I, I, I do want to throw a plug out, Miss Jennifer Hayes. I'm I'm scrolling Thank back you. through. I'm I'm scrolling back through the comments. She has worked her tail off like crazy, like she always does. Yeah. And I and I want to say thank you for throwing everybody's channel out there and sharing the love with everybody. And there's a lot of support in here. You know, we got Barter Mania in here, and he's got that. Uh, he's got that contest uh, that he's trying to get to a thousand. Uh, uh, go support him. Show him some love there. And there's a lot, there's a few new names in here that I haven't previously seen in my, on any of my channels. And I appreciate y'all coming in and joining us. You know, I, I don't recall seeing Art Vandalay in the, any of my stuff. Before. I think he's, I think he's new to the community. I don't really know him either. I No, I've seen him a lot. Uh, I first 
came across our Vandalay whenever Cincinnati Picker had that no go or bolo game show, and he was a he was a contestant on there, and that's how I discovered Art Vandalay. But I haven't personally seen him in none of my stuff, so uh, uh, I appreciate him taking the time. I, he does some live segments on some other channels that I've caught yeah. before too. But I appreciate him just stopping in. That means a lot to me, and yeah. you know. Lobster was in here earlier. Justin came in here. They will be live tomorrow night over on Lobster's channel. So go over there and show them some love. I think they go live right around 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, my time, but it's probably like 6 o'clock their time or something like that. Okay. But, yeah, they, they come on a little later on the Eastern side time. Yeah. Uh, Sunday, you know, we got Tracy and Tommy. They're going to be live Sunday night at 10 on there at Tommy Bernard's channel. That's always a great channel to check out. I'm just trying to throw some plugs out here real quick for everybody. Yeah. Again, thank you guys. Um, thank you everybody who who's came. Thank you everybody who is going to watch at a previous time. Um, we really appreciate it. We're hoping to get better. I think, I think we did excellent in my eyes. I actually, did. I don't think there was any flaws. I think we did better than most uh, for the first show. So, <laughs> Well, I don't know about that. I mean, there's always things we can tweak on, and I, I and I'm pretty excited. We've got some upcoming uh, intros that that's going to be in the making that I think you all might get a giggle from that we're going to that we're going to do, and uh, we it. The show might be called Tools of the Trade. You know, Leroy's going to talk about tools, but next and stuff like that. But he he might have some things up his sleeve, and I'm going to have some things up my sleeve. Not knives. I mean, I could be. We could be. T I love selling hats. We might talk about hats sometime. Uh, it could be video games. You know, you don't know what we're going to talk about here on this channel, but uh, we just thought Tools of the Trade would be a pretty cool name for it and everything. And this is just, we're working, you know, here and there and try to make it better. Okay. So, all right, Mike. Art says it's a great show. It was awesome. Thank you so much. Even Tracy Parks liked it. And she's probably going to complain because it's not long enough, though. She likes long shows. I'm just kidding, Tracy. Love you. Yeah. But um, I guess we'll sign out, Mike. Yeah, we'll um, hop off here. And uh, guys, I don't know, thank if, you. I don't thank know you. if anybody else is live, but if I'll. I don't I don't have a lot of subscribers. I might have a couple hundred. If nobody else is live, I might jump back on myself real quick. I've got some shipping to do, and uh, I've got, I think, four or five wall hair clippers. I don't know. Come on here. If y'all bored, just come back on here and join me, and uh, let's, let's, let's talk eBay stuff, or let's just talk about something other than politics and religion. So... Until next Thursday, at, hopefully we will see you all again next Thursday at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time yeah, right here support on us. the channel. Yep. So, All right, guys. Thank you so much. Again, first and foremost, thank you, Mike. You're awesome. I appreciate the opportunity. I'll get this finger pointing down sometime. Yeah, me too. All me right. Too. Peace thank out, you. everybody. Bye, everybody. Thank you.